This is a screencast recording of some of the features of the PASCO capstone setup for the Physics 112 lab ideal gas law. So when you open it up, um, we're going to be using some black sensors for the science workshop. Those don't get automatically added on, so you have to open up the hardware setup, click on this, and find that sensor. Now the first one on the left is the pressure sensor, it's the absolute one then you're also going to add this one. The second way to do it and add things is if you start typing, it should click on to that sensor and you can pick it from a shorter list. You can close the hardware setup and one of the things I want to do is because we're going to do some averaging and I want to make sure that we don't round off too soon, I'm going to get you to open up the data summary page, uh, click on the sensor and whoopsie daisy, sorry, click on the actual run, absolute pressure click on that, go into the numerical format, and we're going to increase that number of decimal places to two. And do the same, click on the sensor for temperature, numerical format, and up that one to two. Okay. Uh, we're going to get a few things, we'll do a couple of graphs, that's pretty similar to what we've done. You could do one of these and select it differently, you can also drag it on. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one is pressure, which one is temperature, because you're going to be doing both. So they're all both temperature and pressure versus time. So when you take some data there, um, you're going to record it in a minute. Um, get some data, lift up your sensors to make sure they're not touching the pages, and then you're going to go down real quickly so you see a nice response. Now if you let go, it's going to give you some weird data. So you'd want to have like a nice steady pressure against the table and then when you let go it'll you want to make sure it's not touching the table at all so it is allowed to relax the whole way. Okay, And then once you see that it's reached sort of like an equilibrium and it's not changing anymore you can hit stop. The second thing you could do is you could go into the recording conditions and hit a stop condition and set that up so that it'll stop automatically at 30 seconds but you can just wait until it goes and reaches equilibrium and hit your stop yourself. So this part here is looking good, nice sharp, steady thing. And then what would, should happen normally is it would go out and over to the right and reach an equilibrium. Here it's gone off fairly sharp, little wiggle there. And this is definitely not what you want to see, okay? So in terms of taking the data, there's a couple different ways. Um, so say you want to get the data for the pressure before you change things. You can see it's very steady. So if you wanted to go in here, and that's the coordinate tools right there, and get that on and put that on the actual data, you can see it's really not changing that much and uh, value-wise. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could go and highlight and highlight part of the data and then do a statistical sum. So the highlight's right here, the sum's right here, so if you turn it on, it's gonna get a mean value. And you can see it's very similar within a little bit. So either way is acceptable. You're gonna get all your data from these graphs. And then one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is take some averages. So one of the ways you can do that, uh, we just want a table, so you could pick one of these, that would be fine, you wouldn't need the graph. Or you could drag a table in, just grab that. You're gonna select it and create your new one and you're gonna create um, something called v naught. although you can use the same table for other things. Hit tab to get into the units, centimeters cubed, and then once you're gonna start putting in your data, what ends up happening is it'll be whatever it is. Um, this is totally not realistic data for your thing. Once you have that enough data set, you can actually get the statistics on it so press that and it'll come up on the bottom so you can see mean of 60 that makes sense right in the middle spread the standard deviation will depend on how wide it is so if you had something like this and you said this one here it was also 80 and this one was 40 the overall average ends up being the same but the standard deviation is smaller because there's less of a spread okay so that's that for the standard deviation we talked about all those things we talked about adding graphs we talked about adding sensors founding the um, value in the mean, that's pretty much it, okay?